afternoon, greater Philadelphia area. This is Tool Time Real Estate Radio on WWDB 860 AM. I'm Tom Tool. She's Sarah Time and she's Stacy Mitchell. We have Nick back and he is behind the camera and we all work at the Tom Tool Sales Group at Remax Main Line, the number one Remax team in Pennsylvania since 2018. And we're streaming live every week on Facebook, YouTube, Instagram. Just look up Tom Tool Sales Group. So what started as a slow new week, just got news week, just got a little more interesting as we are sitting here, which we're going to get to in a second, um, or actually towards the end of the show, uh, where one of the commission lawsuits was just settled by Anywhere, who is the parent company of Coldwell Banker, Century 21, and some other large brokerages. We're going to start with the jobs report from last week. I think that the Fed finally did it, Stacy. This is like your favorite topic here. Uh, so if you weren't following this, th- this report came out on uh, September 1st um, and the Federal Reserve members, a lot of people think they were smiling, celebrating after a series of data points that gave them what they wanted, which is a softer labor market. So here's the numbers and we can talk about what it all means. So the total non-farm payroll employment increased by 187,000 uh, in August, and the unemployment rate rose to 3.8%. It was hovering in like the low threes before, so this was a, this was a major move up. Um, employment has continued to trend up in healthcare, leisure and hospitality, social assistance and construction, and employment in transportation and warehousing declined. Um, that beat estimates, but... Uh, We also had a big jump in the labor force, which was the biggest reason the unemployment rate ticked up higher. And we had there was it was a trucking company filed bankruptcy. There's the actor strike, which might be affecting some things. So did anybody even notice that there's an actor strike? Just asking. I don't know. uh, I did (laughs) because I heard I heard there's a lot of shows delayed till 2026, which is (laughs) insane to me because that's three years from now. Mm -hmm. But that's what happened. So. Mm So what do you, what's your initial reaction to this? Because this is a big move up in, in unemployment, just seeing that that kind of jump. I mean, because previously we were, you know, well below that number. And, and that, that was a big move that it looks like the Fed's been kind of kind of pushing here. So what, what, do you, what do you two think about all this? I mean, I think that they're, you know, going to be happy to to see that in terms of what that really means for us. Um I'm not I'm not sure. Like, I don't know if that'll mean that things ease up a bit or now that they they kind of got closer to the number that they were looking for, or if now they're just going to kind of like focus on some other things. I'm, I'm not sure. Well, I know that they've been really, um, I know I like how you say it, Tom, softening the market. To me, it's like just making people unemployed, <laughs> like putting people yeah. out of work. So it's, you know, it they, they like to make it sound nice and not as severe as it really is. But basically they want people to not be working so that they stop spending um, to bring the inflation down. They're still stuck on two. Mm-hmm. If you notice, they're they're like just all in on that 2% inflation rate. Um, so they are very happy about these job numbers um, They uh, or the unemployment numbers. Uh, I think it's getting them closer to uh, where they'll probably level out eventually. I, I'm convinced that they're probably going to raise another uh, 25 basis points when when – the time comes because they're still not at that 2% inflation rate. Um, And if they're so gleeful that the (laughs) unemployment is ticking higher, um, they're not going to stop until that inflation rate is at 2%. So this is not surprising. It's just, to me, it's disheartening. Uh, Well, I I, I don't think there's ever any good scenario when unemployment goes up. That's not, that's not good. Um, Now, what we also know is that there's some other data points here. I'm going to kind of go through this. One of them was the quits rate. And this is fascinating to me. Um, It's the the, the quits rate returned to pre-COVID-19 levels with fewer people quitting for better paying jobs. And I think that that's pretty interesting because just having hired, you've seen how many people we've hired uh, in the past two, three years. And some of the expectations around vacation time or salary or benefits, even when it's like very clearly stated in the jobs ads, are are, are outlandish to me. Um, where you know, brand new people out of college are expecting six weeks of paid vacation. I don't know that I've ever gotten six right. weeks. Like, I mean, I, I never had a job where I was <laughs> salaried, but that, that's a that's a big ask, right? So yeah. the fact that maybe people are realizing that they can't just go get another better job somewhere else that that could be a factor here. 
Um, jobs openings is another one. Uh, so the job openings data is one of the Fed's preferred labor market indicators. And they use it to talk to about how tight the, the labor market is. Um, Logan Motoshami from Housing Wire feels like they want to see job openings data return towards 7 million. So they, uh, th- but, th- but it fell below 9 million this past week. Um, and if you look at just historically where it's been, I mean, it was up way higher than that, um, uh, you know, n- almost, you know, about 12 million. So the fact that they're seeing job openings decline is another sign that, 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 they, that they like to look at. Um, and then obviously the, you know, the, the, the key to unemployment jumping was a big move in the labor force, especially for people that are 55 and over. Um, so it, it, there, there's a lot of things happening here that I think are causing this to soften. And if you look at the predictions about what happens in two weeks, Stacey, you mentioned about the next Fed meeting, there's a 93% chance rates stay where they are, according to the CME group. Um, and that's been, that's actually up from where it was August 29th before this data came out which it was 86%. So th- this jobs data could be what the Fed has been wanting to see. And then we saw mortgage rates respond pretty favorably because they were, it felt like eight was going to happen. Yeah, it really Now did. we're getting like 7.25 is where rates were when I checked earlier today. So we might have gotten to a point where we, we've seen rates peak. What, what, do you, what do you think this means for the next Fed meeting? And then where do we see mortgage rates going next? Because- these are the big questions people are going to have over the next two weeks as we approach the September Fed meeting. I think the Fed is going to raise another 25 basis points. That's just what – that's my gut. I just think they're going to do it because um, they're probably going to want to get that inflation down to the 2% mark so that they can claim success going into next year. Yeah. So um, the interest rates when I checked today, I think – did I see 7.125? Let's look at the real-time quote. They okay. ended last week at, uh, in that range. So I'll do that while you guys. Okay. So I think, you know, they'll probably just have one last hurrah before the end of the year um, mm-hmm. because then that's going to be the big hit for the end of the year. And, you know, people are going to feel some more increased in with their uh, interest rates uh, concerning um, credit cards and things mm-hmm. like that. But then going into next year, they'll probably hold off. It's an election year. They have to, you know, the economy has to hum along better than it is now, just even if it's a perception standpoint, um, just because of that, just because of that fact. So I think I think we'll see that one last hit. Yeah, I I am in the same boat as you, Stacey. I think that uh, I wouldn't be surprised to see another hit. And for rates, I mean, I hope that we're on the decline. I mean, that is fantastic news seeing where they came in at today. I know over the weekend, um, I had a listing that we signed, you know, we got our offers in, the one that we selected. They had put, I think, for the range of acceptable interest rates, they had had up to 7.5. And just not knowing exactly where things would land at, I know that we went back and we're like, we we need to see this at 7.75. Um, so... And then, you know, the the numbers came in and I saw where where the rates are at and where they would have, you know, where they're locking in at. And it was beneath the threshold of of where we needed it to be. But just to be on the safe side, I know mm-hmm. that's still something that we're trying to make sure we're we're covering. And because um, I feel like day to day, yeah, it's hard to know exactly where they're going to land. Mm-hmm. So we're at seven and an eighth today. That, that was the re- most mm-hmm. recent rate quote that we got. And if you look at some of the indicators here, so we did see. Um, they, they were up as high as seven and a half last week. So that's a pretty big drop. And to me, that's good news uh, for buyers in the marketplace. You know, you mentioned the election coming up and I, I was reading some information today um, about how candidates are polling coming out in, into because we're, we're basically we're about, about a year out right now. Let's call it um, most respondents think that the uh, the handling of the economy is, is a major weak point for the current administration. And if you don't think that's a reality, that they're looking at this and maybe influencing policy behind the scenes. I don't care what side of the aisle you're on or if you're Mr. Purple like me or Miss and Mrs. Purple, uh, M- Mrs. Both of you guys. Sarah's actually got purple on, on, so good job. <laughs> uh, so the, the, the point is, though, I mean, this is a top priority for folks and. It reminds me a lot of the election uh, that we saw back in 2008 when uh, it was 2007 leading up to 2008 or no, it was 2008 and, and the 2009 inauguration 
where both candidates got together and they had this big summit about what they're going to do with the economy. And they came out with that first time home buyer credit. And because they knew it was a big issue, mm -hmm. people are concerned about the economy right now. And, you know, I mean, this is just, um, you know, this is what people said. So, um, they, uh, were, let me, I'm going to get through all the nonsense here cause they have all kinds of stuff they pull on. Um, 59% disapprove how the economy's been handled. 63% are concerned about inflation. Growth of the middle class is a concern at 58%. So, I mean, you've got the majority of people not happy with the way things are going. And it, it's, you know, it, 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 I mean, you go into this poll deeper and deeper, but this is a major pain point. And 74% of people that responded to the poll felt inflation has moved in the wrong direction over the past year, which... It's funny because we've been saying it's going the right direction, but right. The, the, the policy has continued to act as if it's not. And now I think people are kind of waking up to that fact. So I do agree the election is going to be a, an issue here and we might see some cooling. Now that the labor market's broken, I feel like we might not see a rate increase next month, which uh, now I think the meeting you got to watch, though, is October. It's not going to be because September it was kind of, oh, we might take a break and then we'll mm -hmm. look at it again. It's not this meeting. It's the next meeting that I would be most concerned about. And it's going to have a lot to do with what happens in the housing market because people feel like in this polling that was done that housing prices have gotten a little out of control. Mm -hmm. I mean, are you hearing that from clients in the marketplace or what, what's 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 your sense on the ground here? Because we're, we're dealing with these economic indicators all the time. Oh, yeah, I hear it all the time. <laughs> yeah. You know, people have if they've been watching the market over the past two, three, four years, they're, you know, they're like in disbelief for the most part about where the housing prices have gone. I mean, I've talked to people who wanted to buy like four years ago and they're like, that house is not worth, you know, $350,000. I could have got it like, four years ago for one hundred and fifty. It's like, yeah, I, I, it's not my fault. Right. <laughs> you know, right. I didn't have anything to I do with it. I didn't do this. <laughs> <laughs> this is just where it is. So I do hear it a lot. I hear it all the time. Um, if it's not people concerned about the interest rates, and again, you know, we have to explain that situation, then we're explaining why the home prices are the way they are and why they're not going to be dropping. Right. They're they're not going to be dropping. And if they do, it's not going to be considerable where they want it to be, like minus 150000 <laughs> Yeah. Good luck with that. Yeah. I mean, that's just not happening. Right, right. I've kind of noticed a mixed bag between um, people kind of like in disbelief and then also some people that have kind of realized that or come to terms with like this is the market, you mm -hmm. know. Um, there's more and more people that I feel like I've talked to recently that and now maybe they can't compete in the market. Mm -hmm. um, it doesn't mean that they're able to do it, but they kind of understand where stuff is at. Um, whereas for like a little – I've I, I've noticed a little bit of a shift because I feel like for a while leading up to this, it was, um, oh, this can't sustain. Oh, this, mm -hmm. you know, you know, what is happening? And now it's, I don't know, I feel like a couple more people, like people have kind of started to come to terms with this is what it takes to to get the house. Um, but again, it doesn't mean that they're willing or able to do it, <laughs> but right. they right. they get that this is what is happening. <laughs> Yeah, I think that with um, first-time home buyers, for the most part, they're not is they're not in sticker shock, like boomers are, or people looking for their step-up house, um, because people that are looking for their step-up house they purchased before, mm -hmm. you know, uh, COVID, yeah. so they have a lot of equity. I mean, there's so they're seeing. Well, gosh, you know, I I love that I have all this equity in my home, right? But I don't love where the home prices are now. Right. But first time home buyers, if you're just getting into the market in the past couple of years, you're, you know, it's it's not as drastic of an increase to mm -hmm. you. So I think for those people and they they still very much so want to get a house, you know, they still want that American dream. Mm -hmm. You know, they still want to get in there and, and start their nest egg which I love. I absolutely love. That's like my passion, getting these first-time home buyers into their dream home. I just think it's like amazing or their first home. You know, it's just fun. Um, but I think that they, they're more into, okay, this is where it is and this is what we got to do. And and we understand and we're willing to do, to make that sacrifice, mm -hmm. make those moves. Yeah. So, so here's something every real estate agent should be sharing right now and shouting from the rooftops because there is opportunity in the marketplace. You're seeing rates come down a bit. August, they were a little higher. Steve Harney put this out on X, which is 
what Twitter used to be. For the first time in at least seven years, new listings have increased between July and August. Sellers, are are they finally getting over the sticker shock of higher mortgage rates? And if you look at this tick up, uh, I mean, it's it's substantial. I mean, you saw things kind of bottom out here in the month of July. And if you look at August, it's close to those almost at the June level of inventory. So this chart, I just sent it to Nick to put out there. And I'm clear this is something that agents need to be talking about. We saw inventory tick up. Rates have gone down. What else are you waiting for right now? Because we're not going to see rates crater. We're not going to see prices go down. Any any bounce in inventory is exciting, and this might be the chance for home buyers to get the house they want and haven't been able to find because there are still less people looking for properties right now. So right. this, to me, is really important, and this is the most encouraging thing I'm seeing come out of this. I mean, I don't like labor data and unemployment going up. I don't think that's good for anybody. Um, I don't like seeing the rate volatility and, and guessing what the Fed's going to do. What I do like is seeing more inventory and choices for folks because that helps the people that want to sell and have to buy or the ones that have been out there looking for a while. Now they've got a little more options. And and you're kind of feeling that in the market right now. I mean, we, we, we just had our month of August. We beat last August by 13% in terms of production, wow. right? So think about what the market was doing last August mm-hmm. versus now. And I'm not saying the market's better. Rates are higher. There's mm-hmm. less inventory. What, what I'm saying is that We've adjusted our plan to educate people appropriately. That's one of the only main things we talk about right now. And you're seeing that in a month when a lot of people think the, the year's basically over. Mm-hmm. So are, are you feeling this data in the market? Like, I mean, you, you, you're, you're the ones that are out there working with folks. Yeah, I, I, honestly, as far as the listings and the new listings coming on, I do think there's more choices. There's more inventory. Obviously, there's some selective selected, you know, neighborhoods and communities that mm-hmm. it's just not happening. But overall, when you go in and you uh, go into our MLS system and, you know, there's there's definitely more choices. Yeah. And I th- but I think it's um, it's still a situation of speed yeah. <laughs> because they're not, you know, the the hot ones aren't sitting. So, um, you know, you have to be like on it all the time. And when something good pops up, you have to get in there to get your showing right away because there's no guarantee that it's it's going to be there in a couple of days. I mean, th- this is just so exciting to me to see that inventory is coming up for the first time in seven years in a time of year when people are saying, hey, you know, normally this is when they, they start talking about next year already. I mean, realistically, we got 11, 12 weeks left in the year before we uh, get to that, you know, sort of holiday season where if you, you do anything, it's not getting put on the books until next year anyway. So seeing this from Steve is pretty exciting. Um, and, you know, it's you know, pr- people with out of mortgage are making a move to where they can maybe buy all cash or maybe use that equity. It's people are starting to think about exactly what they want to do. So, um, you know, that, that's, that's some of the stuff that's coming to the market right now, which is exciting. Yep. Yeah. All right. So we're going to take a quick break. We're going to come back. We're going to revisit this NAR issue that has come up. There was some suspect, and and I'm using that term nicely, comments coming out of the National Association of Realtors. And then we're going to talk about this Anywhere lawsuit settlement. So we got a lot of real estate news here next on Tool Time Real Estate Radio on WWDB 860 AM. Welcome back to Tool Time Real Estate Radio on WWDB 860 AM. I'm Tom Tool. She's Stacey Mitchell. She's Sarah Time. And we've got Nick behind the camera. And we all work at the Tom Tool Sales Group at REMAX Mainline, the number one REMAX team in Pennsylvania since 2018. And we're, we're going to come back to this NAR uh issue that and and issue is putting it nicely um so last week we talked about the resignation of kenny parcell the former president of nar um after there were i think it was 19 counts of uh confirmed behavior around sexual harassment claims uh in a new york times expose there was 26 people that were interviewed 19 out of 26 said they had seen it that's a pretty high ratio i wonder i have to do the math but it's too high for anyone's liking for sure And then, you know, kind of what happened about it is there was allegations, including a culture of fear and intimidation that that started with everyone at at, at the very top of the chain of command with NAR. And there were some calls for um, early retirement or the resignation of NAR CEO Bob Goldberg, who's scheduled to retire at the end of 2024. He's collecting about two and a half million dollars a year right now. And 
Then we got this update the end of last week that said um, NAR stands behind its CEO. And they had an emergency meeting on Thursday. Um, and the new president, Tracy Casper, uh, she released a statement after the, this emergency meeting with the NAR executive committee. And it was first reported on, on Real Estate News. And she said that the committee is united in support of our staff. And that includes Bob. Uh, then he, here's kind of the rub on this. So initial responses from NAR and its leadership have been scrutinized regarding this uh, uh, New York Times expose piece. And Bob Goldberg, when asked if the organization had an issue with sexual harassment, he said, I would not characterize it as a problem. Clearly, 19 out of 26 people interviewed felt differently. How, how do you feel about this statement from NAR? I mean, I think if their goal here is to say that, like, we need to we need to start fresh and reinstill trust and and all of that, you got to go like clean clean slate and start over. <laughs> okay. Yeah, um, I I agree a hundred percent. I'm on some real estate um, groups, and this has been big talk in the in the past week about what's been going on, and everybody's in agreement. Like, they're pretty upset with NAR and like, where's all this money going? Why do we pay dues and all that, you know, right. and just people don't want to be represented by, you know, someone who these allegations, everybody is innocent until proven. Right. But yeah, it's all like, yes, so I think it's important exactly. to say that. Right. Although, but know. the allegations, there's, there's a lot. Okay. There's just Mm-hmm. Sometimes when where there's smoke, there's fire. There's just a lot. It's not like, okay, there's one allegation and we really have to, you know, figure out what really happened here. There's, you know, two sides and somewhere in the middle is the truth. Mm-hmm. But you have 19 different allegations, right, from different people? Yes. That's a lot. Right. I mean, that's a lot. So, and he says, we operate in a society where, unfortunately, inappropriate conduct can can occur. Yeah, I, I get it. It can, you know, sometimes there's, you slip up some words and stuff like that. But, um, and he says, like any organizations, we are not immune to these challenges. And any single allegation concerns me. There's 19. Right. So he's not that concerned where he's going to want to, you know, save the organization, you know, and just step down. Right. Just leave. Right. Let let us move on. You know? Right. Well, you got to wonder if he's just going to sit out his term and I think so. cash right. those checks. I yeah. mean, that's, you know, th- this is one of those jobs where it's like you get the job mm-hmm. and then, you, I mean, that, that's a lot of money to be making in a salary per year. And the challenge is we, we, we went through last week and talked about where all this money's going, right? Mm-hmm. And they have this big marketing budget, which I don't know what they do with. And now we've got even more news about these commission lawsuits. They just take that whole marketing budget and allot it for attorneys to protect buyer agency, which real estate agents had to fight for and NAR fought for in the early 90s. But instead, this is what we're doing with it. And then this is where the focus is. And anytime you have something like this happen, first of all, it, there, where there's smoke, there's fire. I don't, I, don't, I don't think you can just sit here and say, well, you know, it's all alleged or every, every – I mean, when there's this many people that come out, it's, you know, it's usually – you got to wonder who's not talking. I think more mm-hmm. so than who is talking. That that's what I found. Right, mm-hmm. and these aren't these aren't like not that it coming out on any allegation is like easy or fun, but I feel like when it comes to sexual harassment, as particularly in the workplace, like that's something that's hard to come out and and do and like move forward with and like bring attention to. You know, mm-hmm. um, it's something that I think you know you have to be ready for a bit of a battle and to be scrutinized and like to kind of step into that light and stand up for what happened. So like, <clears throat> this isn't, this isn't like a fun process for them. You right. Know? Right. And then 19 people, individuals yeah. would have had to have gotten together to conspire. Right. To take them down. Mm-hmm. Right. Okay. That's, that's a tall order to, to, you know, to right. fulfill there. Exactly. Um, like I said, if there was one, you know, to, you have to figure it out. You mm-hmm. have to, okay, let's give the man some time. Let's, let's work through this. But when there's so many, um, you just, that, that, that is tough. And I don't know, I think Tom, you're right. He's just trying to ride this out and collect checks and, uh, you know, just maintain that nothing happened. And I am concerned and, you know, blah, blah, blah. 
But I think it hurts the whole organization in a right. whole. We're supposed to have higher standards. Right. Well, and, and I think that that's part of the problem here is that when you look at agents and, and I mean, I've seen a lot of like social media commentary about this and, and take that for what it's worth. But a lot of people say, hey, I get, I get like zero value out of NAR. I mean, mm-hmm. the, the one the one va- p- piece of value I do put in the local boards are their dispute resolution processes. I, I'm clear that's something that can be beneficial, keeps things out of court, whether it's mediation, arbitration, however that works. I think that, that's got some value to it. Besides that, though, I mean, they're spending all this money on what? I, I don't, I don't, I mean, it sounds like this, this, this marketing company, I mean, I give them a lot of credit for getting the contract signed, good for them, but it doesn't really help us. And you look at, you know, it's, it's about $700 a year to be part of NAR. And um, there's some states that don't require it. We are not one of them. Pencil, you, you got no choice here. Um, I mean, if you want to have access to lockboxes and the MLS, you've got to do it. And, that fee pops up every year. All the time. It's like, wait, I just paid it. I know. It thing. always feels like I just paid it. I'm like, what? <laughs> Why is this here again? Well, and it, it, it's you got to wonder what kind of value you're getting from it. Right. And, you know, I, I just don't understand how this guy's going to get a pass because we've seen CEOs get fired for less mm-hmm. in a lot of cases. And, uh, I mean, we can we went through a list of people last week about, like, what, what worked and what did. Uh, it, we had all the names that, that came up. And I, I, it's just really it, there, there's people now that are getting a petition signed to, you know, have him resign. I, I mean, and, and the bigger issue, which we're going to talk about next, is that we've got these commission lawsuits going on. And the focus is all on this nonsense instead of how are we protecting our members from a potentially industry changing lawsuit? This is a very right. critical time for real estate agents. And if this guy's going to get a pass, I mean, I, I just don't. I, I, I've got a problem with it. I, a lot of people feel the same way. And, you know, the code of ethics, it's great. They don't seem to be very ethical at NAR. I mean, right. and, and <laughs> it's, you know, and, and and if there's everyone saying it starts at the top or they know what goes on, it's, you know, it, 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 it's just it's just disappointing to hear. Yeah, I agree. Very disappointing. All right. We're going to take a break. We're going to come back. We've got some breaking news here. This is the second time we've had breaking news on the show. This is very exciting. (laughs) Actually, it's not exciting, but we'll we'll talk about it. Um, There was a major settlement in the class action real estate lawsuits by anywhere. We're going to jump into that next on Tool Time Real Estate Radio on WWDB 860 AM. You shouldn't have to deal with all the red tape when getting your mortgage from a big or online bank. At Mortgage America, we have access to big bank money, but with the personalized and detailed service of a local bank. We are here in your community and ready to serve with fast settlements, low down payment options, and first-time homebuyer programs. Pre-approval is free, no costs or commitments. For more information, visit our website at mymortgageamerica.com or give us a call at 610-439-8000. Mortgage America is I'm Tom Tool of the Tom Tool Sales Group at Remax Mainline. If you're thinking of becoming a real estate agent in the greater Philly area, I have a special offer for you. Our team did $165 million of volume in 2021, making us the number one Remax team in Pennsylvania and a top 1% team nationally. Our agents love us because we offer them a successful career, a great life, and an unbeatable culture. Agents who've been with us for at least a year average 30 plus sales. Even our brand new agents average 17 to 24 sales a year. We offer proven systems and expert training. We help you set more appointments and sell more houses. Now here's the offer. If you don't have a real estate license yet, we offer real estate scholarships so you can get one for free. Check it out at realestatescholarshipprogram.com or visit the Tom Tool sales group at Remax Mainline at tomtool.com. That's Tom Tool with an E dot com. Get more out of your real estate career and remember the real estate golden rule. You always get more when you work with Tom Tool. Have you considered a career in real estate? Do you want control over your income? Whether you have a license or not, call us today at 610-692-6976 or visit TomTool.com. Join our team, the Tom Tool Sales Group at REMAX Mainline. You shouldn't have to deal with all the red tape when getting your mortgage from a big or online bank. At Mortgage America, we have access to big bank money, but with the personalized and detailed service of a local bank. We are here in your community and ready to serve with fast settlements, low down payment options, and first-time homebuyer programs. Pre-approval is free, no costs or commitments. For more information, visit our website at mymortgageamerica.com or give us a call at 610-439-8000. Mortgage America's Equal Lender. Last one, two, eight, five, zero, one. 
All right, all right, all right. Welcome back to Tool Time Real Estate Radio on WWDB, 860 AM. I'm Tom Tool. She's Sarah Time, and she's Stacey Mitchell. We have Nick behind the camera, and we all work at the Tom Tool Sales Group at REMAX Mainline, the number one REMAX team in Pennsylvania since 2018. And we're streaming live every week on Facebook, YouTube, Instagram. Just look up Tom Tool Sales Group. So we've, we've got some breaking news here, um, which doesn't happen often on this show. Uh, we're on one hour a week. So w- what are the odds? <laughs> so all kidding aside, there was a significant development that happened this afternoon. We don't have the details yet on this because I'm curious. The details are going to be really interesting here. Uh, Anywhere Real Estate, which is used to be um, Realogy, the parent company for Cobalt Bank or Century 21, a lot of uh, large brokerages, have reached a preliminary settlement in two high-stakes class actions lawsuits. So the Merle case and the Sitzer Burnett cases that are centered around buyer agent commissions. This is something that we've been talking about for years. They're set to go to trial this fall. Um, and this news came out this afternoon. The... Details of the settlement are confidential until the motion's approved. Here's what the Anywhere spokesperson stated. The path to obtain final approval and implement the settlement is a long one, and Anywhere has taken the first important step toward a resolution that not only releases the uh, the company, but also our affiliated agents and franchisees. We believe that the settlement will remove future uncertainty with respect to the upcoming trial, potential additional claims, and legal expense enabling anywhere to focus on and continue delivering what's next for agents and franchisees. Given ongoing legal proceedings and confidentiality agreements, we cannot comment further at this time. Uh, The number being tossed around was in the $80 million range. Um, I don't know if that's confirmed or not. I just, that, that, that's what we had kind of seen here. I mean, this is, um, this is something that's going to matter. So what, what's your reaction to this ladies? Just, Just hearing this while we're sitting here, literally prepping for the show. So this is what they they paid out in order to just like drop the lawsuit. Well, the, yeah, they reached a settlement. So I yeah. mean, it's we don't know what the I'm, I'm hearing eighty million. That's that's the rumors out there. It's alleged. I don't I don't have any details of any of this stuff. Um, but that that's what we're being told. I mean, I what is the, I like? I guess my big question would be like, okay, so you've settled on on this, but like, what does that mean? moving forward like our rules going to change like when will we hear what next steps are yeah so that would be my questions too okay so the settlement means what okay Mm -hmm. so they get paid out uh, so between the plaintiffs right keller williams home services and and nar so so this is just anywhere Oh, so just the people anywhere. named in the suit, it's like Remax, Keller Williams, Home Services, They're the defendants. NAR. Got it. They're the defendants. So um, they have to pay up between the three of them. Well, no. So so Anywhere was one of the defendants. So oh. attorneys for the plaintiffs in the Merle lawsuit told Housing Wire the agreement for both lawsuits was a total of $83.5 million as the two plaintiff classes negotiated the settlement together. And this monetary settlement was the most that could be obtained in light of Anywhere's available financial resources. Critically, the settlement includes significant changes to practices relating to the conduct that they have challenged, who is the managing partner and co-founder of the um, uh, Higgins, Berman, Sobel, Shapiro, LLP, and their antitrust team looks forward to continuing to pursue additional relief against the remaining defendants. So Anywhere is looking to get out of this suit. Yeah. That, that's my observation here. Um, and they, uh, and like, th- this is heading to trial October 16th. This is coming up quick. Um, and that's, that's for the Sitzer Bur- Burnett case, not the Merle case. Okay. So the Merle case would still, is still ongoing. So that, that hasn't... is, but, but it's, so both of them settled for this amount. So yeah. Merle and Sitzer Burner have both settled with anywhere for this amount. They, mm-hmm. they negotiated together for it. Okay. The issue was that. Um, the other the other defendants still remain. Um, I mean, there's still Keller Williams, Remax, Home Services of America, and NAR. Got it. Okay, so anywhere, just they want to move on. They want to settle this, protect their franchises and their a- franchisees and their agents. Um, and so they just want to move forward, right? But we don't know any of the details, so it's hard to, you know, right. figure out like, well, where does this leave everything going forward? And I bet our dues go. I bet our Somehow we're paying for it. Oh, we're paying for it. <laughs> and who gets the money? Where does it go? The lawyers. <laughs> well, the law- a lot of people do predict. I mean, we we were looking at all, all this here, and I've been, you know, we've been talking about this for, I feel like years yeah, at yeah. this point. Um, 
is that there's going to be a lot of attorney fees. Mm-hmm. Um, anyone that it's like it's like when you get those things in the mail. If you were if you bought a home between this date and this date, mm-hmm. you might be entitled to a settlement fee, and you send the settlement check in. We we had our school taxes reimbursed because the found, it came out that our school district was overcharging. Got to check back to like four hundred bucks. Yeah. Right. And I lived there since two thousand and eleven. Right. So. You know, I, I think I think what's the bigger thing here is what it means to the business moving forward. Mm-hmm. Right. I right. mean, I'm really surprised they settled. I think that that was that was not something I expected here. No one else is. This is all according to Housing Wire. So, I mean, they, they obviously had some sources here that they named um, the plaintiffs. Uh, attorneys for the plaintiffs in the moral suit did not return a request for comment. The other defendants in the suits have yet to file settlement agreements and. um you know, they're, they're uh, you know, NARs contending that the commission structure helps consumers, which I do agree with, because if you look at what happens in these these buyers that buy homes, they have no idea what goes on in these transactions whatsoever. Now you're going to be dealing either directly with a listing agent or paying yourself, which hurts affordability even more. There's a lot of negative connotations here. Now, what I imagine can happen is you're going to see a couple outcomes, a slight change in the paperwork. That's not a big surprise. You're going to see... Buyer agency potentially go away. You could see people get hired hourly or have a, like have a retainer fee that they like an attorney because they're going out and doing work. So, I mean, you think about it. Imagine if you're out working with somebody and like, oh, they're not paying an agent, Sarah. Um, I I know you showed us twenty five houses. You're out of luck on this one, right? Which, right. which happens enough anyway. It yeah. does. Um, yeah, but <laughs> it does. It, it's going to in- increase that happening more. So I, I've got a couple thoughts on this, but th- those are the ways this could play out here. So. I don't think people get how impactful this is, and most agents don't even know this is going on. Right. Well, the whole, the whole, um, the way that a buyer agency came about is to protect the consumer mm-hmm. anyway. Yep. Right. Because the the buyers were getting totally crushed. Right. Right. They were. There were so many complaints about, uh, you know, if you're l- working with a listing agent, you know, if it's dual agency, yeah. There's always a perception of right. You know, it's what some one side's getting more benefit than the other side. Right. Always. I don't care. It's just human nature. Right. Um, And then, you know, the buyers, not only are they do they have to bring all this money to the table, closing costs and their down payment for their mortgage. Now they're going to have to, you know, either hire an attorney money. Right. (laughs) Which costs a lot of money. Yeah. Or, you know, foot the bill for the buyer agency. Right. Compensation. Right. Or go unrepresented. Right. And yeah, good luck to ever trying to get to a settlement table. You know, right. well, and miss deadlines. You're going to miss inspection deadlines, mortgage commitment dates. I mean, there's so much going on. Mm-hmm. Use and occupancy. I mean, it, it's it's mind boggling. Right. Well, and it's just it's wild that like this was created for a reason, yeah. you know, like to overcome this. So like and it not even that that long ago right you know? so it's just like um that's pretty it's wild. gonna be wild out there Whew. yeah get ready <laughs> yeah i and first time home buyers i mean it's already right their heads are you know Spinning. you look at their eyes sometimes and they're just glazed over mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. when you're trying to just get through a buyer consult right you know when you start talking about title insurance and all these other foreign words <laughs> that they mm-hmm. have and the paperwork uh, you know, I have clients that just skim through some of the paperwork. You know, we go through in detail about, and I can see where they've checked out. <laughs> yeah. You know what I mean? Mm-hmm. Now, uh, there's other people who are very fastidious and they go through everything mm-hmm. and they have a clear understanding and, and they're okay with everything. But not everybody is on that same level. Right. So, and again, this is how buyer agency came to be, you know, to, so buyers can have their own representation. Right. So that they can be protected. Right. Ugh. Yeah. So it, it could be an opt-in. It's, it could be something where they say, okay, we're going to hire you. Mm-hmm. We're going to – maybe maybe, the, maybe financing laws need to change uh, and, and what mortgages can allow on, on the settlement sheet. I mean, a concession there to finance the fee would make sense. I, I, I see that as a very likely possibility here. And, you know, this should be a wake-up call for a lot of real estate agents that are out there because a lot of them, they, they just they, – they treat leads and opportunities as disposable. Uh, I, I don't know, and and you know, meaning that oh, there's going to be more. I can always find some more more people to work with. 
And when it gets hard, they just uh, I, I don't want to work with them anymore. Next, or I, I don't. They, they were rude to me on the phone. If I got if I if I got paid every time someone was rude to me on the phone, I'd be retired by now. So and, and it happens all the time, all the right. time, right? And they, they I don't want to work with those people. But sometimes they're they're motivated and they're serious, and you're actually right. helping them. They're just frustrated by the situation they're right, in. Right. Yep. So. To me, this is a, a – and we've been doing this at our team for a few months now um, where, all right, how do we get more listings? Because everyone wants, like, that shiny buyer that comes in and, like, oh, I, I got the lead. They're going to go buy the first house. I don't have to do any work. Like That, that is the yeah, no. least sustainable business model that's out there. It's a great way to get started with folks. It's a great way to ramp things up with your business. But ultimately, you've got to have some sort of daily schedule and and – be ready to go out and, and generate your, your own appointments or at least work the leads that you have to get appointments. And, you know, it's, it's easy to do, know what to do in this business. It's also easy to not do it. Like, there's yeah. nothing complicated about what, what we do. I mean, I, we were prepping for our, our training. We have our seller conversion workshop on Wednesday, Brian and myself, Brian, our sales manager. And he, he, it was something he goes, hey, how about putting together like a manual or a white paper, right? You guys are going to see this. So spoiler alert. It's no different than the same presentation we gave when we launched it, just in a manual format. It's got everything there. It's like a workbook. It's the same stuff. There, there's nothing radical about it. It's just easy to either do it or it's also really easy not to do it. And, and that's where I think a lot of people get jammed up is that they – and, and they, they don't even get the concept of a call that doesn't produce an appointment. It's like, hey, Stace, I, I know you and Kevin are really happy where you're at. I just want to call and say hi and see how you guys are doing. And you, you've gotten these calls from me. Literally. And, and it's you know, that, that call, people, they have such a problem with it. So like, oh, I'm not getting anything out of this. Well, you don't know how it works. But th- when this is the, it's a mindset issue. Right. Mm-hmm. right. Yeah. I think that agents really have to know how to convey their value and their right. worth. And what are you bringing to the buyer? Yeah. You know, what, what is it? That, do some agents even know what they're bringing? Maybe because they don't because they don't bring much value. <laughs> mm-hmm. Well, there's you know? some that don't. There's right. some that are order takers that catch a lead and then they just hope they're going to go buy the next house. Right. And then they don't follow up with the person ever again. And it's super transactional. Mm-hmm. And maybe we're going to see a lot of agents get out of the business. I mean, maybe we see the I agents go so. from like a million five to like 500,000. Yeah, it could be because if it makes it that much more difficult to, you know, convey your value and right. they already, you know, they work. What's the average work week? And and that's too much down to thirty hours. Yeah, yeah. and that's too much. And um, yeah, if it's if it's difficult to make phone calls and follow up, then why why are you yeah. doing it? Yeah. Well, you know what's interesting too. Like, while again, if you're a good agent, you're not just a door opener. You're mm-hmm. you're providing a lot more mm-hmm. than that. But if on the other end, where you are just a door opener, and you have the buyer agent to go open the door to get you into the house. If buyer agency goes away, would it be the listing agent that would always have to be there to let all buyers in? Oh. And if so, that's a game changer. Would you still charge the same full commission because now you're having to open yourself up time wise to every listing ev- for every listing to accommodate all of the potential buyers that are coming through? Because you you can't just be giving out lockbox to, codes right. to to. Right, random with, people. Right, and have people going like unattended through right. the homes. Oh my gosh, good question. So then, are you even going to be save it? Like, if so it's who, all about the seller feeling as though they're, you know what I mean? Like, well, yeah. and, it, you know, it's th- there's going to be some changes to the contract. I mean, it might be, and, and Bright already got ahead of this. They already said you can offer out zero. I mean, the the the, the previous one was you could you could offer out a dollar. I mean, what's the difference? I mean, right. that that's that's just silly. Uh, So that makes a lot of sense. And Sarah, to your point, I think some sellers are going to say, you know what? I do want to have buyers come in now and we're going to offer out some some commission to them or they write the offer and ask for the commission as a term. And it's got to get negotiated out. I've had to do this with for sale by owners before because they're not there. And it's, hey, here's what we're looking to get paid. Here's how it all breaks down. Mm -hmm. So. Why I, I be, I'm I'm a big believer that we're fortunate in our environment because we had to deal with a little bit of this where it's it's not always a guarantee you get paid right. just by showing up. Yeah. Um, th- the challenge is I don't know that we're built like most other organizations and teams that are out there or brokerages or anybody else. I mean, some I mean there's there's so many agents that just don't they they think they're entitled to something just because they showed up. Right. Mm-hmm. Interesting. Yeah. Wow. I I'm still 
I'm st- my wheels are still turning about what you said. <laughs> are the listing agents going to be the door openers too? Well, I, can, I can tell you definitively any good listing agent is going to say no to that because right. it's not a good use of their time. It's going right. to hurt the saleability of the home. Right. Nobody wants an agent following them around that works for the other party. Exactly. Right. That's like hiring your husband or your wife's divorce attorney. Right. right. Hey, why don't you come here while we have a private conversation to try to settle this out and work out a deal? I right. would think the sellers wouldn't want that either. I, wh- no, they want their house sold. Right. So it's about how you present. And yeah. what I'm clear on is that there's going to be a couple things. One, you've got to have more conversations on a daily basis, especially where the market is right now. Um, Tom Ferry put out something about this uh, last week that most people to set a listing appointment right now. And I'm included in this data set. And my number's right about 20 right now over the past 30 days. You got to talk to 20 people to set an appointment because there's less people that are selling. Right. So you can't just rely on doing the same things you did two years ago to get you the result that you want. Secondly, it's one talking to more people, but then also how, how, like how is, how strong is your appointment? Like you and I have practiced your appointment a lot and and like, I've like took you with me and and you've been with me on appointments and it's Mm -hmm. like, Hey, let's watch this. Let's apply it. Most people, they just mail it in with the appointment prep and you've got to be there. Like that's a performance, right? You've got an acting background. I mean, you've got to kind of be psyched up for that a little bit. I mean, I still, Oft, more often than not, on my way to the listing appointment and listening to that recording from like, yeah. what, two and a half years yeah. ago? That just like goes over, just so that when you walk in, it's second nature and it flows and it's not um, like jumbling to try and think, you know, like, all right, and what piece do I do next? You know, right, like, right. Um, you know, and there's always going to be a little bit of improv, I feel yeah. like, when yes. you when you go in and you have to be flexible and prepared for that and like know the information that you can so that you can apply it in the setting as it can flow and feel more natural and you know make sense but yeah I mean for all of the listing consultations that I've done I I still unless if like I have other like unless if there's something else going on I'm trying to listen to that on my way just so it's top of mind. Well, and I I would say you need to do the same thing for the buyer appointment as well if you don't have that down because some people think they can just show up and kind of muddle their way through it. How many times have you guys been – forget that we're all real estate agents here, but you've been to like you're buying a car or you used to sell credit cards or uh, machines, right? Or I mean you 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 owned your own business. When you walk in, the people don't know what they're doing and it's like a very like disengaging presentation. I mean most Mm. people just walk out. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Or they're like, hey, thanks but no thanks. See you later. Right. Yeah. Right. Yeah, it's it's not it's not good. It's a turn off. Right. Mm-hmm. Well, and I feel like um oftentimes people are looking for a reason not to work with you. You know what I mean? Always. Like yeah, so I think it's so. yeah, so it kind of mm-hmm. you have to be mm-hmm. you know you have to give people information they don't even know that they need. They, that they need, yeah, mm-hmm. <laughs> like, right? Oh yeah. Oh, you open their eyes. You don't yeah. know that you need this, but this is what you need. And right. yeah, and their eyes are like, oh wow, yeah. like. Buyer's estimated closing cost sheets. How about some seller net sheets? Yeah. At all different price points. Yeah. This is what, this is the bottom number. Mm-hmm. Yeah. And all, guess what? All your expenses are out of it. You yeah. know what I mean? This is, this is what's going to go into your account. Right. They love that. Yeah. That's, that's what, that's the bottom line. That's the cherry on top. You right. know, that's what they want to see. Right. Not only that though, they want to see that you know how that you run your business. Mm-hmm. Right. They want to see comps. They want to see the marketing plan. Yeah. They want to know how you're going to market these things. What are you going to do? Mm-hmm. Yeah. You know, I that stuff is so important. Most people don't even know there's that much marketing involved, right? They don't. Well, they don't and have a clue. You bring up a good point because most agents have a three-point plan. They're like, yeah. oh, we're going to put it on the internet. Uh, I'm going to get it on Zillow. Anybody can get it on Zillow. Right. And that already gets you to 75% of the buyers because mm-hmm. Zillow has 75% of the consumer traffic right now, right? So- if you're already at 75%, how are you going to tap into that other 25? And if you don't have a plan for that, mm-hmm. that's where you can move the margins. That's where you can get the seller more because not everyone is doing those things. And, and we have a lot of strategies uh, lined up to do that. And the flip side is for buyers, well, how do you get them some of these how, – how do you have a strategy to win multiple offers, right? I mean, we've mm-hmm. drilled that. Um, and because some agents are like, oh, yeah, they're asking X. Yeah, let's, let's offer them the asking part. There's no prep. You don't even, you don't even hear from them. Mm-hmm. Right. This is the stuff you got to communicate up front to prove your worth. Because, look, legal zoom, right? You can, you, I mean, you can get like an LLC doc right. done for a couple hundred bucks, but people still hire lawyers. Right. Accounting, right? Some people do their own taxes. 
Ugh. Right? Well, well, yeah, that's a whole other story. Uh, but there, there are services that allow for that. There, there's other professions like real estate that have been commoditized. So this is something that's been a long time coming. But there's also still people that are very high-end professionals that do really well. And they communicate their value at the appointment. And you know what, what's funny about this business is there's so many folks out there that show you exactly what to do throughout the whole process. We've got it all lined up at our team. And then you can't just pick and choose what you're going to do. You got to do all of it right. to get the predictable result. And that's the challenge that some agents are going to have. They think they know better or they, they don't have a growth mindset to get better. Right. Obviously not you two. Yeah. And I mean, if you do like cutting out any of those pieces that are there for a reason will bite you later. <laughs> like don't don't reinvent the wheel. Right. <laughs> right. You know, there's systems in place. Yeah. Just just use the systems. Right. You know, it might not happen at the pace that you want it to happen, but it's going to happen. Exactly. You know, it's you it's you know, some of it is get back to basics, get on the phone, you know, mm -hmm. and and talk to people. You actually do have to have conversations. You know, that's and a, and a lot of the a lot of the day-to-day -day things that you do are not things that produce a result for that day or tomorrow. You know, right. it's mm -hmm. it's setting it's setting the pace so that you have the future mm -hmm. um, appointments coming and you know, when when they're ready. Mm -hmm. So that's how you can survive long term in this. Short term, are any of these other companies going to settle? What do we think here? I don't see any shot NAR settles. That would be my guess with them. Um, I think uh, I, the other companies I don't know about. I, I, I'm surprised anywhere settled here. And, you know, I'm curious, like, what the, like the, if this was like something that they just decided on their own to do, if they consulted with the other firms that were listed. I mean, I, I've had Nick Bailey tell me you can ask me any question you want except about the commission lawsuits to my face. So I don't have any inside info here. Nick Bailey's the CEO of Remax, so just to give some perspective. Was the wording that you had said when you were reading about uh, it earlier, none of the other uh, defendants or whatever had... Um, have yet have, to have, file settlement yet, agreements. Okay, yet to file settlement agreements. So that doesn't really indicate if they're coming or not. I, I, don't, I don't think we know anything about yeah. it. I mean, that's uh, this is just what, this is in a Housing Wire article, very, you know, I'm a, we read Housing Wire all the time. I'm a right. subscriber. You know, I, I'm just, I'm surprised anywhere settled. I would also argue anywhere might be the weakest of all the brands there too, in terms of how much business they're doing, how big they are, how much market share they have. So, you know, that, and they gave up the maximum amount they could afford based on their financials. Yeah. It's funny because it says damages are anticipated. Damages in the suits are anticipated to be up to $4 billion. Uh, and damages in the uh, the Mueller suit is expected to reach up to $40 billion. So, But it was an $80 million settlement? 83. 83. So you got $4 billion and potentially $40 billion. But they always settle for less. Right. They always settle for less. Right. So yeah. That's a haircut. <laughs> That's a lot well, less. It doesn't sound like it was a haircut well, for anywhere. For not, right. Not for them, but for anticipated. Yeah, remember, they also had um, to rebrand their company name, yeah, too. So, I mean, that's no different than these companies that change their name. So, if you're in real estate and you're not paying attention to this, you better, you better get a clue. And we'll kind of leave it there. That's it for this week's episode. You want to follow Sarah on Instagram. She's at Ty underscore Ty Time. You can follow Stacy at the number two Mitchco on Instagram. You can follow me at TomTool3RD. And we're streaming live every week. Facebook, YouTube, Instagram. Give us a follow. Subscribe to our channel. Check out the show every week, Tuesdays at 3 o'clock on WWDB, 860 AM. That's it for Tool Time Real Estate Radio.